Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Hayyami Meseches. Erech and Daf we begin at the Mishnah, two lines off the top. So we shift over to the topic of Cherem. Until now we spoke about a fellow who gave away his field to the Hegdish in a standard Hegdish, you know, format, a Maglish my field. There's another variation of Hegdish called Cherem. Cherem means set aside, removed, destroyed. Sanctified, depending on the uh, different uh, approaches in the Mepharshim. And a cherem can take on two forms. You can have a cherem, which is really just another variation of a hegdish. So it gets uh, donated to the Bede Kabais, pretty much like any other item that you're being magdish. It's just that he used the word cherem instead of hegdish. That's one format. Another uh, variation is cherem, which goes to the kaihanim. So it's a gift meant for the uh, the kaihanim, and as long as the donor still has it, it is fully kaddish, and there's meila if one diverts it for personal use. It's a very interesting phenomenon. It's kaddish with meila at this point, only until it is actually forwarded, you know, delivered to the kain, in which case it becomes like his personal possession. And he may use it like anything else that he owns. Okay, so we have two variations of, of cherem. One is cherem lebed kabayis. One is cherem for the uh, the kahanim. And um, the mission begins by speaking about limiting the cherem. You should not give it all away. It says the Mishnah, Machrim Adam, Mid Sainai, Umi Bikarai, Umi Avadav, Umi Shif Chaisav Aknanam, Umi Steh A person shouldn't give it all away. Part of his sign, light animals, part of his bakar, cattle, part of his slaves, part of his maidservants, part of his estate. And we're going to see in the, uh, the Gemara, it's based on a Pasuk. You're not meant to give it all away. Not only don't you give everything you own away, but even in the you know individual categories, don't give it all away. Him herkem eskulam enam mukram. In fact, if he gave it all away, it doesn't work. According to some of Farshim, even regarding one category. In that respective category, he gives the whole thing away. Einam mechrama, the hegdish is not activated. When the case of the kain, it doesn't work. Divrei Rabbi Yezer, that's his opinion, part but not all. Amar Rab Allah ben Azari he comes and adds another twist to this uh, directive. Ma'im legavai. Look, even in terms of offering it to gavaya, to hegdish, to kain, to you know, in the cherem context, we say, look. Don't give it all away. In other words, Rashi, Lahachrim, Kol Nochas, a person may not donate all his assets. Alachas, Kama, Vakama, certainly, of course, all the more. In terms of personal expenditures, make sure you live within your budget. Spend responsibly. Shehi Adam Chas, a person should take care, be responsible, and Chas on his assets. No, Nabili, how do we know that? In fact, you can't give it all away. Tanur Abanu, we have a based on that Pasuk which reads as follows the Pasuk says like this the word me, me the letter me goes on to behema as well it's like it says umi behema umi the Pasuk is telling you part of what you own part of your assets part of your animals don't give it all away Rashi explains that we speak big about metal in here. Only some of your, you know, belongings, your your items. Don't give it all away. The word may Adam teaches, Veloikal Adam, not all your slaves. Mi behema, Veloikal behema, Mi stay achuzah. Achuzah say, 
ולא יקרא שתי אחוז, זה עושה נאט אול. יאכל או לא יאכרם, אם יאכרם יהיו מוכרמים. אוקיי, פראפס אינה צפוס טו, אבל אם הוא עושה את זה, זה עושה. תאמר להם האח, which is the first word in the Pasuk, it's a limited, limiting term. If it's done, partially it works, otherwise it doesn't even work. Did very early yes. Omar was an Azariya, just like in the Mishnah, he adds a life lesson. Ma'im l'gavoya. If even when, when it comes to donating to Hashem, ain't adam rashay l'hachram kol nechas, a person may not give it all away. Achaz kama kama, certainly she adam chas al nechas, a person should live within his budget. Tzricha. So why, why does the Pasuk actually have to stipulate this, you know, partial concept is uh, to all his assets, to the individual categories as well, animals, maidservants, slaves. I mean, once we know that you meant to keep some, then automatically, you know, you would assume it applies to everything. No, there's a need to discuss each item separately. Because the ikas of Rachman and Mikolash the Pasuk only began with that first statement. Give away only part of your assets. I mean, I would say, yeah, don't give it all away. Call the Isle, everything that he owns, you shouldn't give it away. But if it's just, you know, a specific category of assets, or a buck, or maybe you can give the whole category away, no problem. Kosev Rachmana comes to part there and says, May Adam, even in terms of an individual category, like a slave, May Adam, some, but not all, like a had the Torah only said that, yeah, you shouldn't give all your slaves away because how are you going to manage with that help? They can't manage with that help. But in terms of your fields, okay, maybe you can give all your fields away and how are you going to live? Where are you going to get your food from? Well, you'll, uh, you'll work as a sharecropper on somebody else's field. So perhaps it's not the end of the world to give it all away. Then, if the Torah only limits reference to these two categories, don't give all your slaves away, don't give all your fields away. These things are critical, vital to your, to your uh, sustenance. The crops off the field, the slaves to do your, you know, your work. But if it's a matter of other belongings, all your cars, okay, you can get away with uh, without cars. You can, you know. Zrichi comes to passing and says no. Don't give it all away. Now, Behema Lomeli. Why does the Pasuk have to... Uh, so they say Metatalin. It would perhaps be different because you can... You know, there was available, you can buy more metalphon, so it's not so critical. It's really, that's what the Torah specifies. That um, whether it's a matter of metalphon, whether it's a matter of slaves, or a matter of fields, keep some. Now, why add the word behema, right? Behema lamali. Why is that important? To single out that even, you know, when it comes to animals, don't give it all away. Says, well, the Sanya, as per the following verse, Perhaps a person can apply the cherem status to his family members. Son, daughter, slave, or maidservant that are Ivrim, that are Jewish. Which he doesn't really own, they're just serving him, but he doesn't really own them. Or perhaps on a field that he purchased, which wasn't really his estate. That's why we have the word behemoth, tamalema behemoth, which is setting the tone, setting the standard. You want to be machram? Sure, but it has to be comparable to your animal. My behemoth, yeshlu rishus lamoicha, just like my behemoth. It's fully yours, you can sell it, whatever, right? Avkal, sheyesh like rishus lamoicha. Likewise, cherem only applies to items which likewise have a right to sell, which are actually yours, as opposed to all those which aren't really yours to sell. What about your daughter? By Rebitoi, Ali Bitoi, Tani, your young daughter, underage daughter, Yeshla Rishus Lamaicha. Torah says you can sell her as an Amma. 
So if you have that ability, you can make your cherem as well. Once again, we'll go back to the behema for comparison. Ma behema. What's unique about your behemoth? You can sell her forever. For all time. Sell her for good. Likewise. Cherem is only, Avkoil only applies to something else on which you have the ability to sell for all time. As opposed to daughter, although you can sell her, but just for a you know, limited time basis until she becomes a Tela. So it's not in this, not covered under this uh, system. Okay, so we have this long pasig instructing us to apply a cherem only to part of metatel and part of sadechuzah, part of avadim, and part of behema. The word behema seems to be extra because once we have all those other categories covered, behema is just a subset of you know items that you own. So what's that for? Says, well, no, it's not extra. It's coming to teach us the parameters. Of where cherem is chal, where it can be applied only in something which is fully yours, you have the ability to sell loyla. Omar was a So he comes and adds another twist to uh, Rabbi Eliezer by saying, Look, im legavoya ein adam rashai, if you shouldn't give it all away to heaven, certainly when it comes to personal expenditures, spend uh, responsibly. Isn't he just repeating Tanakama's instructions? Says the Gemara, "Ikabenayu Rabbi Ilo." There is one point of difference, Rabbi Ilo, because Rabbi Ilo teaches us that there is a halacha that applies to tzedakah as well. Dom Rabbi Ilo, Buusha, when the Sanhedrin was in the town of Usha, he skidu they established a system like this. Hamabaz base. Rashi says, Laniyim. How much stucker does one give to poor people? By the way, the uh, Chavetz Chaim in uh, Bira Halacha adds that it applies to other mitzvahs as well, unless it's a personal mitzvah that you're obligated to do, in which case you can spend more. But typically, I'll give out, don't overspend, because that may, might deplete his ass, it might deplete him, and he might become, uh, you know, it's, uh, they're, they're dependent on others. So act responsibly, even in terms of stucker or mitzvahs. I'll give out, you shouldn't spend more than a fifth. Rashi over here brings that the source of the fifth concept is from Yaakov Avinu, who promised Hashem, right? Anything you give me, Aser, Aser is a tenth, Asren is another tenth, so a double tenth really means a fifth, Aser, Asren, Allah. So at most, you give away a fifth. In fact, there was a story about a person, Masa Be'echad, should be Kesh Levaz He was about to spend more than a fifth, but they didn't let him. His colleague didn't let him. Who was his colleague? Rabbi Yeshevav. Some say it was actually Rabbi Yeshevav who was going to spend more. And his uh, colleague, he was held back by who? Rabbi Akiva. So that's Rabbi Ila's rule. At most 20%. By the way, how do you work the 20% system? Because we can have, you know, five opportunities, you can give it all away. <laughs> right? Each time a fifth. So the Rishalmi, they bring down the Rishalmi, says, initially you give a fifth, 20% of what you have now, but then next time it's only a fifth of your income, your, 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 your profits as they come in. This way you're left with uh, something substantial to live on. So this Allah is actually the point of the Machlek is now Mishnah. Rabbi Lezim Nazaria, what was he adding? He was adding Rabbi Ila's halacha. She adam chas on the chasaf. Watch out. Spend with care. Not more than a fifth. In line with this halacha. Whereas Tanakamu was simply saying, look, don't give it all away. As long as you hold on to something, you're okay. Without regard to the 20% rule. Continues the mission. Hamach rabno yubitai. Ve'avdai. Ve'shev chasei ivra. Ustem miknasei. So once again, Right? We go back to this fellow who is giving away stuff that he doesn't really own. His family members, a field that he purchased, it's not really his, you know, only uh, temporarily. Einon Muhramin, the the cherem will not be applied for the simple reason that it's not his. Shainadam Mahram Dabar Shain Shlay person can not give away something which isn't really his. 
Now, what about a Kayin or a Levi? Can they make uh, you know, a Cherem and donate their assets to, uh, to the Kayhanim? We're talking about Cherem and Kayhanim now. HaKayhanim Malavim ain't Machrim, and they can't do Cherem, whether it's uh, land, whether it's belongings. Divrei Rabbi Yehuda. That is the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Oimer, he says, hold it. HaKayhanim ain't Machrim. I agree that Kayhanim can't. Because the coin is the intended recipient of a cherem kayhanim, so he's basically taking it out of one pocket, putting it in the other. Shacharom and shalahen. But a levi, why not? Valavim machrim, and they can make cherem. Shein acharom and shalahen. They're not the intended recipient, so they can give away their assets. And Rebbe seems to break a compromise. I'm a Rebbe nidr and div Rebbe Yehuda because in terms of land, a land giveaway, I go with Rebbe Yehuda. That a levy can't give it away. Okay, so again, Kaihanim can't give away. What about a levy? Rabbi Yudu seems to say no. Rabbi Shimon seems to say yes. Says Rabbi, I take Rabbi Yudu's opinion regarding Bikar Kois by land, because lands are meant to stay by them. Shanamar Kiachuzas Oilamilahem. Pasuk says that the levy are meant to hold on to their properties, not meant to uh, give it up, so uh, it stays by them. They shouldn't be giving it up. But when it comes to other, you know, belongings, Vidir Reb Shimon, on that I adopt Reb Shimon's approach that a levy can take his belongings and give it away as a cherem and talton, she'en shalahen, because unlike by the kain, who is the intended recipient, in which case it doesn't work, that he should give it away if it goes right back, not so by the levy, so why can't he, he, can't, why can't he give away a talton? Okay, so at this point, what do we know? A coin cannot make a cherem, according to both opinions, regarding a levy. Rebida says no, whether it's karka or metatlan. Reb Shimon uh, seems to say a levy could, and Rebbe seems to strike a compromise. A karka, no. Metatlan, yeah. Okay, says so well, let's analyze the machlek. Rabbi Yehuda, what's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion? Bishleim a kohanim ein machrim. I understand. I fully understand why a kohen can, because as we said, because it's going to the kohanim. Shacharam and shalahen. El alavim. What's wrong with a levi giving it away? Bishleim a mekarki loy machrim. I understand why he shouldn't give away his land. Achsiv ki achuzas elomi lahem. Property is meant to stay by him. El matatli. Lichmi. What's wrong with giving away matatli? Amar kro. The pasuk links belongings to his land. Right, the pasuk that we just learned before, discussing items and right properties. We have a linkage. Makish metatlan We have a connection between metatlan and lands. Just like he can't give away his land, likewise is metatlan. Reb Shimon, Reb Shimon responds. Bishlam By a coin, I fully understand. It's meant for him. There's no point in giving it away. El alavim, but by a levi, bishlam metatlan. Lachrim. Delay Makish. I understand. Right? Why Rabbi Shimon holds that a levy can give away his ass, his belongings, because he doesn't hold this linkage, this connection between Metatlan and Karka. El Mekarki Amai, but how could he give away his land? Hoksiv Achuz Asaylum Lehem of a Pasak, meant to hold on to it. Says the you're right. You're right. He agrees a levy can't give away his land. Just his items, just his metatlan. My machrim, not to come. When Shimon says he can give it away, metatlan only metatlan. Okay, so at this point, a kain can't give away anything. A levi, all agree, he cannot give away land. What about metatlan? Rabbi the links metatlan to karka, just like karka cannot give it, be given away. Likewise, metatlan. Shimon doesn't make that linkage. So karka no metatlan yet. Ask the Gemara. So you mean they're in full agreement on the Karka that the Levi cannot give it away? Let's take a look at the next part of the Mishnah, Rebbe. He seems to relate to a totally different approach in their Machlekes. Um, Rebbe, Rebbe says, Rebbe I adopt Rebbe's opinion that a Levi cannot give away when it comes to land. Apparently, Rabbi Shimon allows it, right? If he's picking and choosing opinions, apparently there's a machlok. We did Rabbi Shimon as opposed to Metatli, where I agree with Rabbi Shimon that they could give it away. 
Apparently, Mechlal, the Rabbi Shimon, Mekaki, and Amikom, apparently, Rabbi Shimon is disagreeing on the Karka as well. He's allowing Glaive to give it away. On which Rabbi chooses the strict view. No, says the Gemara. Oh, Gemara. No, Rabbi is just simply clarifying for us the context of the Machlekes. It's not as broad as you think. Oh, I'm a Rabbi. Rabbi is saying like this. Nirin. Div Rabbi. Le Rabbi Shimon Kakois. Rabbi Shimon is in full agreement with Rabbi. Rabbi Yudah's position is acceptable to Rabbi Shimon when it comes to Kakois. He's in full agreement. That Levi cannot give it away. He was only arguing on metatalin. Shaf Rabbi Shimon and Echagol. Rabbi Shimon was only objecting. Ella metatalin. They were yelled that Levi can give it away because he doesn't link one to the other. Avam Karkois, but in matters of land, mightily agrees, fully agrees with Rabbi Yuda that Levi cannot give it away. Okay, so bottom line: Can a uh, Kayin make Cherem Kayhanim? Not at all. What about a Levi? Karka, no. Metatlin is a machlekes. Omar b'chibarabin. Hechrem metatlin. Let's go back to a standard cherem. A Yisrael pledged his cherem to the Kayan. Which Kayan? Noisnon chokan shiirtze. So if we're speaking about metatlin, choose your Kayan. The Kayan of your pick. Shanema kol cherem b'Yisrael chayya. Pasuk. So where Hashem is speaking to Aaron Akain, Cherem goes to you, Lachoya, you, your descendants, by pick of choice. So the uh, donor decides and sends it to him. But in terms of land, that has a more formal distribution process. Hechem Stoisov, he did Cherem on his fields. In this case, you can't just choose your recipient. Nice and the Kain should Mishma. He gives it to the Kain who's on the job and, you know, in the base of Middash at that time, the, the rotation, the group that's uh, officiating that week. Shnemar, Kisteach, how do we know that lands are directed to the whole you know, rotation? Shnemar, Kisteach, Herm, Lakain, Tiach, Uzasai. The Pasuk compares the, um, the Sadeach Herm. The coin is comparing the Steachuza, right? That's the Hegdish that we spoke about in the past. A person donates his Steachuza to the Hegdish. Kambiyavil goes to the Kayhan, just like a Steachir. So we have this linkage between the two. And now we know that the Steachir was given to the Kayhan. Now, which Kayhan? Kayhan of your choice? No, the gomar la coin la coin because la gear. We make a link to the repayment of money stolen from a, a gear who died without any yarshim. The Torah instructs us to give it to the kayin. And in both it says la kayin. In this passage we just mentioned la kayin, right? That's the acherim is given la kayin. And we find the word Lakayan by the repayment of the Gezel Hager, Ha'asham Hamushal Hashem Lakayan. So make a linkage. Just like the uh, re- repayment of the Gezel Hager, the money that you pay and the, you know, the uh, fifth and the, the, the carbon there, is not given to a coin of your choice. It's given to the coin that's serving the Mesa at that time. Likewise, the Sada Acherim is given to that coin in the Mishma. Now the big question, how do we know the Gezla Ger is directed to the Kayhanam and that Mishmar, the Sani of Abraiz? La Hashem La Kayin. So the Pasuk speaks about returning the money to Hashem, to the Kayin. So is it to Hashem, to the Hegdish, or to the Kayin? The answer is they're both right. It's a payment to Hashem who then allows it to the Kayin. Kanoi Hashem, Hashem sort of acquires it. You're paying it to Hashem. And the Son of the Kayin, Hashem gifts it to the Kayin, Shabbos and Mishmar serving at that time. I mean, you're insisting that it's the Kayin, Shabbos and Mishmar, it's the Kayin serving at that time. Perhaps you can just choose any Kayin that you wish to give it to Kshuaymer. But since the Pasuk there also makes a reference to the Karbanis, right, the carbon that you bring along with that monetary payment, that certainly goes to the Kayhanim who are serving at that time. Kshuaymer Malavad, the side, so the money payment is aside from the, you know, the, the carbon, Eilaki Purim, Asher Chavabay 
So clearly, who's tending to it? Harei Bekoyin. Shabbat Yisrael Mishma, Chasem Madaber. The carbon is being looked after by the the carbon is looked after by the Kehanim serving at that time, and likewise the money is directed to them. Hence we know that the Sadeh Acherim, likewise, ends up with the Kehanim of the Mishma. Now, which which, uh, which Mishma? The Mishma, that's, that's there when you're uh, when you're donating it, right? But now comes another halach regarding uh, a field which is given to the Kehanim. And the question will be, which which kaihanim? Sada hayoytzel kaihanim beyegu. A fellow donated, okay, a sada echuza, personal field. It's sitting by the hegdish. Nobody bought it back. Come yevo, right? The fiftieth year is distributed to the kaihanim, the kaihanim that are serving at that time. Sada hayoytzel kaihanim beyegu. Nice no mishmash of paga beyegu. So it's given, it's divided amongst the Gayanim that happen to be serving the Beis Hamidosh. When Yevil arrives, Rashi says, when does Yevil arrive? We're speaking not of Rosh Hashanah, actually there's a Shita later, but the uh, accepted view is that the Yevil sort of gets activated at Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is considered the activation point of all the halachas of Yevil, including the fields being distributed to Gayanim. So they're the lucky group, the ones that are in the base Middash, come Yom Kippur of Yevil. Ibailu. Now comes an interesting question. We know that the Mishmar would serve for a week and would rotate every Shabbos where the past Mishmar would serve the, the morning, you know, they'd bring uh, you know, the Tamir in the morning, and then uh, midday they would uh, switch and the new Mishmar would take over. The question is, Let's say uh, Yom Kippur of Yevil falls out on Shabbos. So Shabbos is sort of a sheer day. Right? They're serving part of the day and they're serving part of the day. So which one gets the field? Who's in charge? So if the Yom Kippur of Yevil falls out on Shabbos, who gets it? My. Amar Chibar Ami Mishmei de Chulfna Noisna la Mishma Yaitz. It gives it to the uh, departing Mishma. Why? Says Rashi because they were around when the night entered, when Yom Kippur entered, it started the night before, and they were around at that point. So they're the ones that are Zoych. Amar Av Nach Mar Yisrach Tani Nami Yochi. Find the same in a Brisa that in fact it's the start of Yom Kippur, the night fall of Yom Kippur. Evening, right? Which uh, triggers the uh, Yevil uh, system. Nim says at It turns out that interesting that echad Yevil echad shvi is misham ke echad. That the letting go of the Yevil and the shvi is right. Shvi is um, releases debts, right? Some money that's owed to you is released on shmita, and uh, Yevil releases all kinds of fields and properties. They work in tandem. They work simultaneously. So basically, you have Shmita followed by Yevil. And all things happen at the same moment. Why? Rather, because it's just that Yevil works in the beginning and Shmita at the end. Adrav is the opposite. It's only because of that. Because the release of the debt that, that Shmita triggers happens at the end of Shmita. That's the Allah. Shmita works at the end. And all the yevil related issues and processes are triggered at the beginning of the yevil. Adarav, just the opposite of Shemochi Havi. It's only because this happens at the end of the Shemitah, which coincides with the beginning of the yevil, that's why you have this simultaneous effect. Emo mepnei shayevil. Yeah, exactly. That's what the writer meant. Mepnei. It's only because. So since the Shemitah effect happens at the end of the Shemitah, which coincides with the yevil effect, which happens at the beginning, so you have a simultaneous, you know, releasing of debts and properties. Says the Gemara. What do you mean? The uh, Yevil gets activated on Yom Kippur of Yevil, not Rosh Hashanah. And Yom Kippur is 10 days past the end of the Shemitah, which is the year pre- prior to Yevil. Bishlam is Shviz, I understand that Shviz affects at the end. At the end of the seven years. So, the debts are released at that point. El Yevil but 
Yevil, you know, releases the field, etc., at the beginning of the Yevil, meaning at Rosh Hashanah, which coincides with the very last moment of a Shemitah, Yom Kippur, actually, ten days later, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur, Yom you blow the Shev, Yom Kippur, that's when you activate the whole Yevil process. Actually, it's a new Shita. The Amor says, unlike uh, our assumption that it happens now, Yevil, the Amor, he says, Yom Kippur, the Chal Yevil, Yevil gets activated on Rosh Hashanah, which coincides with the uh, very end of, of Shemitah. Okay. So, bottom line is that the Kihanim are entitled to get the, uh, to, to divide the uh, field that, that, that one was Machrim, to the um, Kihanim. Now, which uh, group of Kihanim? So if you are Machrim Metatlin, you can choose your kind, but when it comes to Karka, it's the fi- fine system, it goes to the Kehanim of that Mishma. Likewise, Sadeh uh, Achuzah, that one was Magdish, that sat in the Hegdash proper until Yevil, is distributed to the Kehanim that are on that Mishma. Which Mishma? The Mishma that was uh, on watch at the uh, beginning of, the, uh, of Yom Kippur, the night of Yom Kippur, which is the activation point of Yevil. And there's another shita that actually it's Rosh Hashanah of Yevil. Okay, says the Gemara, Shama Chizkiya Bar Bilvata. So Chizkiya Bar Bilvata heard the halacha that we said before to distinguish the cherem of Metatalin, where you can choose your recipient, as opposed to the cherem on lands, where you can't choose your recipient, it goes to the coin of the Mishmar. He says, What's the difference? The Azal Amr Kamei Rabbi Yavo. So he presented the Rabbi Vo with a kasha. He says, don't we have that linkage between the cherem of Metatlan and the cherem of land? We had that possibly for that linked it. It was actually subject to Machlekes. But the lake is Metatlan and Karkois. Why don't we connect the two and deliver it to the same recipient, to the Kehanim of the Mishmar? So he says, you're right. It's subject to Machlekes Tanoim. This whole idea of linking is not so simple. Lava Tanoi. Isn't it a Machlekes Tanoim? Right? Some connect, some don't. And uh, this opinion that we're quoting now, is going like the opinion. We don't connect. So each one has its own designated recipient. Metatlan, you choose your coin, but uh, Karka, the of Karka goes to the coin of the Mishma. Okay, let's leave the Mishnah for tomorrow, Beda Hashem. We spoke about two types of Cherem, Cherem to Beda Kabayis, Cherem to Kaihanim. Either way, you don't give it all away even in terms of individual categories, you hold on to some, according to the words of Nazaria, and actually, you're not meant to spend more than a fifth, Adivaz Vizez Mechemesh. We spoke about, you know, the items that you can uh, be machrim. It's limited to items that you own, you wholly own, that you can actually sell, as opposed to other things which are not really yours for long term. You can't give them away as a cherem. Um, Kehanim can't give any away as a cherem to uh, Kehanim because, as the mission explains, it's theirs. It's theirs to keep. Now, interesting, Tais says Akasha. Yeah, it's theirs to keep. That only applies to Metatalin because by Metatalin you can choose your recipient. So you can say, look, listen, anyway, it's going to me. So what's what's the point? But by Karka, Karka, we said, goes to the coin of the Mishmar. It's not a personal gift to him. Uh, to your coin of your choice, so let the coin do a cherem on his land and let it be given away to the uh, kohanim serving the mishmar. That's not taking it from one pocket and putting it to the other. So he just says, actually, the pasuk that we apply to the levim, kachuzas lahem, which doesn't allow them to give to give up their properties, applies to the kohanim as well. He says, even though the pasuk relates to the levim, but the mistamel kohanim ami hachihu, he just says. Assumingly, this uh, limitation applies to Kainim as well. So that, that is the uh, reason why a Kain cannot apply Kherim to his land either. Now, what about Levim? So we all agree that Karka he can't give up because of that Pasuk. By Metatlin, some make a Hekish to the Karka and some don't, which allows Levim to give away the Metatlin as a Kherim. Who, uh, who does the Kherim go to? Metatlin goes to the... Well, Karka goes to the Kain of the Mishmar. Kehanim of the Mishmar in terms of Metatlan, that really depends whether you link them. <laughs> right? If you link them, then it goes to the same recipient. Otherwise, it goes to the coin of your choice, like Truma. 
Okay, all the best to you and atzlachar.